What is up my friends and a happy hump day. Today I want to take you guys through a full work day in my life from the second I wake up. I mean obviously I showered and got my tea and did things like that but really from the very beginning to the very end whatever that might entail. You see the thing about being a TV news reporter is you can have your whole day planned, your whole day lined up but you never really know how it's going to go just because breaking news and oh my goodness as soon as the warm weather comes, as soon as the nice weather hits, boom, it's like shooting, 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 all breaking news. Like I, I make sense. It's nice outside. So more people are outside doing fun things and also more people are outside doing bad things. So yeah, I'd say there's definitely more breaking news in the summer. We've already had more than usual. And then in the wintertime, fires are generally more prevalent just because you have heaters and Christmas trees and all kinds of things that contribute to that. As a lot of you guys know, I have a weird problem slash disorder where I wake up so much before my alarm each and every morning and I just have to get out of bed. Like if it's within 30 minutes to 40 minutes, like something inside of me is just like, we must get up. I don't know what it is. I don't know what it is. So to outsmart myself and so that I'm not getting up at 1.20 in the morning, I now set my alarm for three. So normally it was set for 2 a.m. Now I set it for three. And because of that, somehow, some way, I've been waking up at my ideal time, which is like just after two o'clock in the morning. And it's been working for me. I mean, it's definitely risky because there is the chance that I will sleep in until three, which is not not okay, but lately I've been getting up around 2.15 and I am loving it. I love how for me like 2.15 is sleeping in. My life is pathetic. And now it is time for me to pick out an outfit. And back when I was a brand new reporter, I was so ambitious. I had this picked out the night before, but those days are long gone. And basically what I do is I just stand in front of my closet with the weather app in front of me on my phone, trying to figure out what to wear. and. Honestly, it is one of the warmest, I think this is, yeah, this is the warmest morning we have had so far this year. I mean, 61, I think I'm gonna go for the gold with a dress and no leggings, which is very brave, but I'm willing to show some bravery. And actually, you know what? The story I'm covering this morning is patriotic, so even though you're probably not gonna see my dress because I'm wearing a jacket, I think I'm gonna go for the gold with a blue number to show my patriotism. Wow, I just dumped my entire pen jar and you cannot even believe how loud that moment just was. I am so sorry, Zach, please love me. To everyone who yells at me for being too loud in the morning for Zach, maybe, just maybe, you do have a point. And okay, right now, guys, I am attempting to contour my nose, which is, I really don't even think this is going well. I don't even think this is how you're supposed to do it. I basically just take my bronzer, do two more lines down the side and really what we're hoping is to thin oh my gosh is it gonna blend it we're really just hoping to thin it out because my nose I don't mind it but it certainly is not as thin as maybe it could be like I kind of wish it was just a little more like but not that but you know what I mean so we're trying to thin it out uh, trying being the operative word here because uh, it just it's just not working. To all my fellow TV news gals, this blush, this is it. It is the Laura Mercier blush in the shade Strawberry, and it is just so good on air. It's like a really nice pop. I probably wouldn't wear this in my everyday life, and I really don't, just because I feel like it is a little bright, but I feel like it's really good on air. Putting on blush actually kind of kills my soul because I know it's something I have to do. It's just something people do. It's something they say looks good, but I personally don't like the way blush looks really. Like I'm not a big blush gal, but I don't know. People say it looks good. So I just, I do it. I do it. I'm a follower, not a leader. Welcome to Zach and I's organized shoe closet. Yes, we really keep things tidy around here. Honestly, I hate this, but it's just, it's just the way we do it. And these right here are a reporter's uh, biggest necessity. No, I'm not wearing heels all day. That would be insane. I'm running around constantly, so I'm just wearing these honestly pretty dirty sneakers. And yes, I do wear them with a dress. That is the look, but it's kind of like a reporter uniform. Like if anyone shows up to a scene wearing heels, it's just like, really? Really? All right, it is 4.17. The deadline I gave myself was I had to leave here by 4.30, which is good. So I'm not late, even though I'm a little frantic because normally I'm a little bit earlier, but I just wrote up my web script for the story I'm on today, which as I mentioned is patriotic. It has to do with honoring our fallen military heroes, also first responders as well. And then all of my 
scripts are in for the actual show. For this story, I'm gonna be live in the 5 a.m., the 6 a.m., and the 7 a.m., once a half hour. So for instance, boom, my first one, what time is it at? Let's see. My first one is at 5.09. This is what the anchors read, and then this right here is my script. If I have time, I will write Zach a nice little message. His birthday is in three days, and then after that, we are out the door. All right, it is 4.45. I have arrived at my location, kind of. I don't see my photographer anywhere. I'm confused. He might be in a different area of the park. It is pitch black, and this right here, this is the life of a morning reporter. All right, guys, I found the right locations. We've got my photographer, we've got the camera, and we've got the local 12. Oh, that was not good for my camera. We've got the microphone, and that can only mean one thing. We're ready to go on TV. The nonprofit Carry the Load is coming to Cincinnati today, but it's just one stop in a 50-state journey. The goal is to bring back the meaning of Memorial Day and so much more. Local 12's Clancy Burke is live to explain how you can help. Clancy. <laughs> Hey, Sheila. Well, the founders of Carry the Load realized the best way to spread a message is to get out there and spread it yourself, and that is what they have been doing ever since. All right, it is 521 in the morning, and while most people are probably in their beds still fast asleep, I have already done one live shot, and right now I am hitting my social media, which, yes, is a requirement. We have to tweet at least two times a day and Facebook two times a day as well, so I kind of just will tease my story, let people know what I'm covering for the morning, and that they should tune in to local. They started out in Minneapolis two Fridays ago. Then by three o'clock today, they're going to be here in Sycamore Township and eventually they're going all the way to Dallas. And no, volunteers aren't getting around by train or plane or car. They're biking and walking. 4,100. That is how many miles nine volunteers are going to be walking and biking. That's right. The goal is to bring back the meaning of Memorial Day. Just wanted to do a little check in because the sun is up and so are we and I have just one more hit of the morning at this location. We did six live shots, gotta do a look live for the later shows as well. And then I'm heading off to my second story of the morning, which is a nine o'clock live shot at an elementary school. This morning I'm here with Principal Hustle and you know, first of all, kind of just break it down for me. This school year has been very different, yet you guys are trying to send them off in a safe way. Oh my goodness, guys. It feels like I am running around like a chicken with her head cut off because I can't believe I even made it to this Zoom interview. It is a 1031. This is my elaborate Zoom setup now that Zach has to be in the living room because he has his big computer. And oh, my interviewee just entered the meeting, but yes, this is the setup on my bed, but no one can tell, don't worry. It's just like a nice little background and he's entered the meeting, so I gotta do this interview. Morning. Hey, good morning, how are you? My Zoom interview is done, that's a funny shot, but this was with a musician for my story tomorrow. So now I need to go in and log the interview, meaning I just basically um, transcribe it so that I can write my script. But before I do that, I need breakfast. I am dying because it's 10.46 and I've not yet eaten today. And I'm about to devour this in about four seconds. We interrupt this busy work day. As you can see, Zach has taken over our Zoom studio. He pretty much just gets free reign of the apartment. <laughs> but he's putting on his sneakers, going on a very exciting journey. Where are you going, Zach? I was about to say, I don't know why this was my natural thing. I'm about to go get vaxxed up, but like they don't put it in like your arm like a, like, <laughs> just, like Yeah, like, like where they put like, obviously like IVs, like they try to find your veins, but <laughs> vaxxed up. Zach is gonna finally get his vaccine and he hadn't done it all month long because I currently don't have health insurance as I'm in between my jobs. Like I'm in my new job, but because of the timing, I basically had to go a month without health insurance and I never got any info from like Cobra. People are probably gonna judge me like, oh, you should have went like online and signed up for help. I don't know. I just don't have health insurance. I don't think at this exact moment because mine doesn't kick in until June. So I didn't really want to get it while I don't have health insurance. Just in case. In case I have like a bad reaction or whatever. Like I know it's been so rare of people having bad reactions to it, but it has happened. But with uh, DeWine doing a vax a million, Clancy's forcing me into no, getting a vaccine no, now because no, no, she's no. so money greedy and money hungry that with a chance we could win a million bucks, she's like, get your ass in, or get your bleep, get your blank get your tush. Uh, in there to 
help us win a million bucks. So that is the biggest lie ever. <laughs> Funniest thing is that, so I don't know if you guys have heard, but Governor Mike DeWine here in Ohio announced that he was doing a lottery where anyone who is vaccinated can win a million dollars. Five people are gonna win. It's kind of crazy. Like it's a really crazy news story we've been covering for like over a week. And yesterday I was like, oh, like I was covering the lottery. And Zach had not heard of it. I'm like, do you have a TV news reporter girlfriend or not? Or like, I don't understand how he has gone a week without knowing about the lottery. Like this has been the talk of the town. I've been working. <laughs> You've been working I'll on selling. Yeah, I don't sit around watching the news. I can't watch my product, I have to sell it. <laughs> the second, like not even a second pass by, the second Zach heard about this lottery, he is just online. Like I gotta sign up for a vaccine now. And meanwhile, <laughs> It's been out for like months and Zach's kind of just been, you know, like we said, he has the health insurance issue. Don't want to chance it. No, if a million dollars is on the line, because one thing you have to know about Zach is he's actually like a lottery <laughs> fiend. You love I'm the lottery. I'm not a lottery fiend. Yeah, you but, are. <laughs> <laughs> okay, you know, before I get prejudged by a couple thousand people, no, I'm not a lottery fiend. I will probably spend, and this is an honest number, if I had to guess on a lottery, like tickets a year when they get big, I probably spend 80 to 100 bucks. Oh my gosh, that's even more than I thought, Zach. But like that's, and it's actually probably not even that much. Now that I'm thinking about it, it's not that much. Cause it's, I only do it when they get like the big jackpots. I hate it, Zach comes home with the lottery tickets. So basically in case you don't know, I'm against the lottery, like so against it. I think it's a colossal waste of money. You're never gonna win. I oh, mean, yeah. I, I, I mean, mm. let, let's make it clear. If I had to say my pro or against the lottery and or like gambling like casinos, I'm against it because, well, I can go and I can have fun and it's not that big of a deal. I'm not saying losing 80 to 100 bucks isn't a big deal, but it's almost like a fun thing. Like my mom did it when I was growing up. Like I'd go to the two. Um, my parents did too. Yeah, I would go to the gas station with her and we'd pick out the numbers and, and whatnot. So yes, while people abuse the system and waste money that don't even have the money to be wasting, praying they make all this money. And yeah, I think the system's actually pretty bad. So I agree with Clancy, but obviously like Sure, I, I still, there's a part of me that when $800 million is out there, sure, I think it's a little bit of fun to go buy $8 worth oh, of Oh, I just, I just, I don't know. I just, I can't do it. So I entered this lottery just because it's free. I already got vaccinated, so why the heck not? I entered it. Obviously, but like, yeah, I'm not going to win. The lottery? Because I, it's not costing me anything. <laughs> My whole thing against it is I'm like, you're losing money. The average American, I looked it up, spends a few hundred dollars on the lottery a year. You're, you're wasting thousands in a lifetime. It just, it makes me mad. But this lottery, I entered. I did it. Tell, tell them what you always say. But I always say, and Zach hates me when I say this, I don't want to win the lottery. I wouldn't. I'm not kidding. You always, yeah, you're smirking in the background. <laughs> well, she always says, I wouldn't quit my job. I don't want, like, that is so far from true. No. I, I don't think you're out there seeking this stuff or whatever else, but if we want $800 million, you'd be quitting your job. No, I... Put it on record. Okay, here's the thing. Like, I, I just... You would. I'm, no, you're lying. You, you ended up agreeing with me. Don't don't put this false face on. I didn't. Out. I didn't agree you with had, you. It was like once. It was like when you were having like an actual tough week of work. You're like, yeah, maybe you're right. I won't actually. <laughs> well, here's which, the th here's the. Well, okay, okay. I, I think what I told you was, you know what? I I don't think I'd be doing what I'm doing in the same capacity, right? I think I'd yeah, branch out. Yeah. But I I still would point. work. I still okay, would work. But I quit point. YouTube. Do you think I would quit YouTube? No, absolutely not. Yeah, we YouTube's would just passion. do the stuff we would want to do. Which oh my gosh, guys, how what? What cool content would that be? <laughs> Just watching us spend our 800 million. But I stand by it, and I also have told you this a million and one times. I don't want to win the lottery. I think it changes your life for the worse. I think it creates an incredible amount of stress and pressure of who to give the money to, because obviously you're not keeping all of it. You're finding ways to give back and I just I think it'd be so stressful and and uh, gosh and god forbid you're in a state where you can't remain anonymous well most people do struggle I know there's all those horror stories after you win the lottery yes there but, are I was just googling it yesterday but we would use all you smart people to help us give good ideas on what charities to give back to no but to and, okay and maybe we would do something cool maybe we'd be like oh we're dropping like a 50k lottery <laughs> ourselves like yeah jump. oh my gosh and then they could win money giving back would be awesome but do you so, know how yeah, you're my wife yeah yeah, that's on purpose. But it would be so stressful because, I mean, so many people would begin messaging me and telling me their story. And, like, I was watching one of those episodes or shows about, I remember, I don't know what it was, but 
people who have really taken a, a downfall after they won the lottery and it was just the amount of just stress of people writing in and each and every one of them telling you how much they need that money and it, 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 mm. anyway so my point is I really don't think I'd want to win the lottery but I did enter this one it is 1108 we are back at our little makeshift office over here and I have about an hour and a half to put everything together for tomorrow I also have to enter in some stories for the later shows because for every single thing that I shoot in the morning I also put something together for the evening shows as well so that's the one thing about this job I am never truly absolutely never looking at the clock and just counting down the minutes until my work day ends it is the opposite it is me looking at the clock and saying we have 20 more minutes to do this we like there's not enough time in my work day like I wish there was more time but I don't want to be working you know 10 hours I'm already working nine as it is and yeah there are just there are not enough hours in the day to do everything I need to do because with the morning shift you're doing things for today, but you're always doing stuff for tomorrow because obviously there's not time to contact people and get interviews before my 5 a.m. live shot. So that is what I'm doing right now here at the uh, little makeshift office. And I'm hoping we can get everything done by 12.30. That is the goal. It is 12.20 and finally we are done with work for the day with 10 minutes to spare. But technically not really. Because I need to plan for Friday. That's the thing, like working as the morning reporter, you're not only working one day ahead, you're always working two days ahead. Because sometimes it can just be too much of a scramble to try to set up interviews morning of. So it's just, it's, 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 it's Thursday. And that means my, is it? Oh, today's Wednesday. That never happens to me. It's Wednesday and my brain is already gonna explode. But after work today, I felt very called to go on a little shopping spree. So we've got a brand new summer hat, we've got brand new sunglasses, and we have two new denim jackets. And actually, I originally went to the store, Nordstrom Rack, to see if they had any tan or neutral trench coats because I hate my red one. And it's the only trench coat I own. It's the very first one I bought right before I became a reporter four years ago. It just does not make me look good. It actually reflects red into my face. And I realized, well, I, I knew this was a thing for like a couple of years, but I confirmed it's a thing reading a blog post from a photographer and she was talking about recommendations and tips for what people should wear when she shoots them and she said she recommends neutral colors because any color will reflect into your face so the reason I like wearing earthy colors like blue I, I, I like blue tone when it comes to reflecting in my face red or orange or pink or anything like that not my style but I couldn't find the trench coat I'll have to try to order that online in the meantime now we've got a lot of a lot of goods oh my goodness I am starving and this looks so good we've got some avocado toast with grilled chicken in the air fryer of course and broccoli and this is about to just go down the hatch and then I'm gonna go in there take my nap and we will see what uh, what nightfall will bring. That was weird, I don't know what I just said. <laughs> okay, bye. I just got out of the shower after taking a two hour nap and we are ending the day the same way we started it in our wonderful Minnie Mouse robe. A lot of you guys comment saying it looked like Minnie Mouse. I agree. No way. And this right here is a nightly ritual of sorts. Look at Zach's face, he's in like utter disbelief. That's nuts. This right here is Zach's nightly routine, his two favorite shows. I mean, Wheel of Fortune is my favorite show. But Jeopardy, you enjoy as well. Jeopardy too. With his bowl of corn per use that he loves so much. Mm. But nothing is better than this dinner right here. We've got the potato, the avocado, the chicken, the asparagus, a little side of grapes, and the real fun is coming once I finish, because guys, it is Wednesday. And you know what that means. Cruel Summer is out, and I am obsessed with this TV show. You guys have to watch it. It's on Hulu on Wednesdays. I know it's on Freeform Live on Tuesdays as well, but I can't believe how much I like it because it's about teenagers, and I normally don't like shows about teenagers, but man, we just, we love it so much. Yeah, I wouldn't say I love it. So it started like an eight out of 10. And anyone that's watching, you can give your opinion as well down below. Episode three, four and five, because this is around six now. They haven't gotten nowhere. They haven't gotten anywhere. There's been no new information basically given. They haven't done enough to kind of keep my full interest the last three episodes. So episode six, we, we better be in for, for a big one to 
keep me around. Well, I disagree with Zach and I'm in love and this is just mm, Wednesday nights. That's why I specifically planned my week so that Wednesday would be a rest day from the gym so that I just have free time to just have a nice Wednesday night watching my show. Could it get any better than this? And I have ruined everything. And actually, his birthday's not even until tomorrow. And I've already ruined everything. It has just not been a good situation. This is so bad. It's not so bad. Yes, it is. I can't believe I like wasted all that money. It's like the love languages. She <laughs> just is trying to love me how she wants to be loved. And it just, sometimes it just doesn't work. Maybe this time it will work.